most unassuming member of Van Halen, on stage he still puts on a show, particularly when he slides across the stage on his knees. What I'm doing on stage is, is me. That's the only thing I can do. Seriously. I put, I put everything I got into what I do on record or live, and I'm glad people like it, but it's just very funny even though I'm in my late 20s. How late? Uh, it's 10 to 2. I still feel like I'm a jerk kid. Like when, when I was in high school, when chicks didn't want to go out with me because I didn't have a car or this and that. No, I, all right, I, all right, all right, now stop. I still feel the same way. You have been named best rock guitarist by, what is it, Guitar Player Magazine now for five years in a row. You are married to, you know, one of America's sweethearts okay you get kids screaming in concerts what's it going to take to make you feel like that people really do appreciate you and you've got something going for you i mean it seems a little bit over modest okay i don't feel like i'm over modest but i guess maybe i am everyone always tells me hey you know get out of your wimpy attitude about yourself and this and that but i started playing guitar to like have something on my own that I like to do and people look at me and go, hey, he's good at something. I never bargained for all of this. I don't think I'm any different than anyone who comes to see us play. It really isn't an inferiority thing. It's just the way I feel. Playing guitar is part of me. If Van Halen never goes, you know, people don't like us anymore. Um, I'm not going to go get a day job or I'm going to continue playing guitar. That's what I love to do.
so funny. A rock star. Sounds like one of the Flintstones. <laughs> <laughs> it does. Hi, I'm from Bedrock. I'm a go <laughs> rock star. <laughs> You know exactly what I mean. You know what a rock star look is. A rock star like is something a rock star. on stage you sure as hell do. When I think rock star, I think of a person posing, wearing skin-tight satin pants or spandex. I'm not like that. I, I wear the clothes I do on stage because they'll beat me up if I don't. Because <laughs> I might just seem go out there the way I look right now. Yeah, I think you should. Because I love to great. play. Yeah. When you started out, did you, what did you envision for Van Halen? I mean, when you were playing for $100 a week, what were your dreams? Okay, what, what I dreamt was that we would be famous, but not famous in the way the word means. Not that I could walk down the street and everyone would go, hey, that's him. Not like that, but famous in a way that people like the music we make. I would love to be the Invisible Man and just play. Why don't you stand behind a curtain then? Because they won't let me. My brother used to throw drumsticks at me. Move! Move! Jump around! I mean, I, I, I don't jump up and down and slide on my knees in the studio. I play. How That's you... all I ever bargained for. stage and you're sliding on your knees and you're jumping up and down? I mean, does it give you an extra added kick? No. When I always threw drumsticks at me and that really beat me up, but everyone used to yell at me, you know, move, move, do this, do that. Uh, I was afraid to, to do or move the way I felt like moving. And what I'm doing now, no matter how ridiculous or whatever I look, sometimes I see pictures of myself, I'm going, but what the hell, that's me. Whereas back then, I would try and move the way I was supposed to. Hi, I'm a rock star, I'm a lead guitarist. I better look like every other lead guitarist, otherwise I won't be accepted. What I'm saying is that the way, the way I move is the way is me. Robinson, and we're back on the inside track with Eddie Van Halen. I asked Eddie if he really was as modest as he seemed. I know some people who love that spotlight, that being in the middle and causing the hysteria, whatever. Uh, Alex pointed this out to me. He said, next time you do a guitar solo, look. And he said, you can slide on your knees or kick your amps or do whatever you want. But the people cheer loudest when you stand still and play. And that makes me very happy that they appreciate what I do on the guitar, not on my knees. At what point did you know that Van Halen was going to be something special? I always thought Van Halen was going to be something special. To me, Van Halen was special when we played backyard parties. Because it was me. What were you like then? The same jerk I am now. <laughs> What'd you play? What'd you look like? I played guitar. And... I know you played guitar. Oh. <laughs> I, I didn't look too much different, actually. But to me, Van Halen was always something, you know? Something special to me because it was, it was uh, the main part of my life. You've said that the guitar is your first love. Is that still true? There are different kinds of love. I mean, I, I wouldn't trade my wife in for another guitar. It's just part of me, period. Actually, it kept me from growing up. Really. Like, like my father. Two things he always says is, uh, you only live once, and there's nothing better than a good life. <laughs> He's like a real major role model to you. I mean, you never oh, yeah. had any other heroes that you looked up to, no movie stars, no musicians, no. nothing. It was him. I'll tell you, Alex and I and my mom and dad, we're a very close family. And I almost play to please them, to give their seal of approval and go, yeah, I like that. 
that means more to me than 20,000 people in an arena cheering. Someone who knows Eddie knows how close he is to his brother Alex. Eddie told me about some of the scrapes they got into as teenagers before they started Van Halen. My mother and father used to tell Alex and I, good up, job, have something to fall back on. Here I am, 21 years old, going, oh, God, Al, what are we going to do? So Al has this bright idea, and he goes, here, put this blue overall on. And we went down to San Marino, which is a real rich section, South Pasadena area. And Alex would go knock on the doors and say, hi, I'm from uh, San Marino Department of whatever. And I'd be sitting out in the gutter taping up the house number to paint the number on the house. And Al would charge him three bucks. And that's, <laughs> that's how we made money. To Wait buy. a minute. You just, like, calmed them into thinking that you had to oh, paint yeah. the number? Yeah. Well, what if they already had a number on their house? We'd say, well, it's, you know, it's mandatory. Once a year, it has to be done. <laughs> Al was a very good talker. You got away with it? Really? Uh -huh. for until, how? until one day after we did this for about a month and a half, every day, a cop happens to pull up. And he goes, hey, what are you doing? I'm going, ow. <laughs> so he just said, he kicked us out and out of the city. Was it very much like you were the younger brother sort of getting into these scrapes that Alex was devising? I, I depend on Alex. Yeah. I really do. Sounds hokey, but I, I, I love him so much. Even if he wasn't my brother, he would be my best friend. That's why we can fight without hurting each other, still get things out. I used to love Dave Clark Five, so I bought myself a drum set. And I'd be out throwing the papers, you know, as a paper boy, to make money to pay for the $125 drum set, and Alex would be home practicing Wipeout. And he got better than me, and he was taking flamenco guitar lessons at the time. And I picked up his guitar. With more of Eddie Van Halen after this. Hi, I'm Isaac. Lisa Robinson, and we're back with Eddie Van Halen on the inside track. You don't know what it is that makes Van Halen good? No, because uh, when Dave, Al, Mike, and I get along great, it's no different than when we can't stand each other. Are there really times when you can't stand each other? Sure. Come on, you're married. Aren't there times when you don't feel like putting up with your husband I mean Valerie will admit to putting a hammer to my head sometimes a hammer to your head? Oh, okay not a hammer maybe a door to my face <laughs> whenever you know or spend a lot of time with one person it's inevitable that uh, you fight period Alex and I were brothers without him i don't know how i would handle all of this and we fight more than anyone i've ever known but we also get along better than anyone i know that helps me get getting along with anyone else around me just like getting along with valerie it uh we fight so much that we get everything out. The majority of the ideas I come up with, I write on piano and then apply to guitar. And nobody believes me, just like no one believes me that Eric Clapton is the only guitarist that I ever caught licks from. What I used to do is I had a, I'd sit down with a turntable and listen to the live cream stuff and take the turntable and put it on 16, not 33 RPM, but uh, 16, which is real slow. And I take the balance and put it to the left or the right, whichever side the guitar was on, and crank it up and play along. And it sounded like, you know, real, it's like an, almost an octave lower when you turn the speed down to 16. But I, I I learned everything, like, note for note. It seems to me, however, that, I mean, as far as stuff like people think, when they think in terms of 
guitarists, and they think of 60s guitarists, you may not have listened to them, with the exception of Clapton. But what you're doing is you're taking the same instrument that they used, and it's like you're moving it into another dimension. I mean, it's like you've created this whole other kind of language. You do stuff that I never heard before, and that doesn't mean that you're better or that you're... Yeah. Well, I, I, don't, I don't at almost. all feel that I'm better. If, if, if I kick the bucket tomorrow, the only thing I want people to at least think of me as or respect me or whatever is that I have done things on guitar that no one else has done. I'll be right back with Van Halen's David Lee Roth on the inside track after this. The most outspoken, outrageous, flamboyant, and honest rock stars that I've ever met. I started our talk by asking him what he feels his role is in Van Halen. I look towards making a show. It's showbiz. It's Broadway. It's tinsel. It's glamour town. It's Hollywood. You know, the lines, anti-mame, ballet eye is calling, boom, you know. Deliver the lick, man, the ace riff. And the ones who've heard it before turn to the people on their left and say, dig this, dig this, dig this. If there's ever been anybody who doesn't underestimate our audience i got to say it's the dime who diamond dave man <laughs> i want to tell you because everybody cuts it down they say all these kids all these teenagers all these people got double digit numbers and it all starts with one 14 12 13 something like that and i say don't flatter yourself baby because people ain't no smarter you get inside the building and you make a show and man everybody becomes highest common denominator and when you're dealing in large numbers of people words that go Kush! work better than words that go if you want to make sense you use the kind of words that go so that it translates to 20,000 people you can touch the person in the 93rd row you can touch them with your words almost physically you can touch them and you have to know how to do that whether it's exaggeration or using certain kinds of words and words that go they work, man. 93rd row. Here's it. Here's it. Smells it. Taste Even the word. If you use words, go, <laughs> they get about to the 14th row and peter out. And people say, what did he say? I didn't hear that. Ray, let's go. This is Lisa home. Robinson, and we'll be back with more of David Lee Roth after this. How has Van Halen changed in 10 years? Van Halen has changed in 10 years over the last 10 years in that we have become smoother. In what way? We seep right under your door. Man, you never even know what's coming. It's like always you think you've seen it, okay, saw it this season, that was it, saw it, and it just kind of seeps under your door. And you don't even notice it until after the show and people say, that was different. That was something new. That was something that I didn't expect. What do you think about your voice? My voice is like a whale. Started out as a real clean soprano. Brought tears in my grandma's eyes. That was before I had hair on my chest, etc. You know, like that. And it was real clean soprano. And then I started screaming in the shower which was truly my base of operation. Where did my voice come from? The shower. And I would hear something off of records and then practice it in the shower. Those high zones, wow! You know, those high screams, yeah, baby, you know, and all those low things and everything. And I can't stand to listen to it personally on tape or on radio or otherwise because to me it's just like a bleating you know uh, coming like that but i sense the conviction therein because i know where it comes from why do you dye your hair i like to look 
like, wow, because you're only young one time. Let's do it now. Let's have good time now. Let's, while we have the energy and the wherewithal and the ideas and the, let's change and let's do this and let's do that. And hopefully I can keep that through the years. Is that like, if you only have one life, let me live it as a blonde? I mean... <laughs> Seriously. That's what well, I am having more fun, honey. <laughs> Dave has the reputation of being a real party boy, but those of us who know him well know that he has another, more serious side. Even though he's always surrounded by people on the road, I asked him if he ever gets lonely. Oh, I get lonely a lot of times because people who perceive of what's happening with the band only perceive that and that's their five minutes and that's exists but it is not the total and if you look at the total yeah you know you want to okay you want to fall in love you know, i mean of course you want to fall in love where the little rock stars come from <laughs> it's like okay you do like that and you want to talk with somebody but it's very difficult because people don't understand what kind of life you're truly leading out here. And me in particular, I got a heart. You got to have heart. Miles and miles and miles of heart. Come on, five dollars. What play was that? Oh, damn Yankees. Very good. I'm very open. I'm a very social kind of guy, you know? I like to talk to people. And believe it or not, my ears are bigger than my mouth. It's just my haircut. <laughs> like people feel intimidated so i reassure a lot of times and i always hear oh wow man you're not like i thought you would be man yeah yeah don't bother so much because i got used to it long long time ago but don't you think that a lot of that stuff that you do serves to put distance between you and people all that yada yada i mean all of that all the lines all the flip all we the do talking. spin magic we do make magic tricks. We do make sleight of hand. We do make showbiz. And I love showbiz. Oh, Lord, how I love show business. You didn't answer my question, though. I'm answering your question. You do a lot of things, but what's your first love? What are you living for? I don't figure history is going to record my accomplishments, but what will be on the stone will say is a spirit. You go for the spirit. Hmm. And then Rachel Ward will fall in love with you. We'll be back with more of David Lee Roth and Van Halen after this. For more, they're coming to tuned up <laughs> pair of free of chaos party animal ski sunglasses. Killing the it's coming, trust me. Just takes seconds. Seconds. This is Lisa Robinson. We're back on the inside track with David Lee Roth. Was it your idea to call it Van Hill? Yes. Why? Well, couldn't easily call it Roth. <laughs> It was my idea. Why couldn't you have called it Roth? Because it doesn't sound romantic enough. Van Halen, to my ear, in a poetic sense, sounds like something that could be a euphemism, Argo, for the wind. The Van Halen winds, like the Santana wind. Or it could be a piano player, a classical piano player, Van Halen. Tonight at the Dorothy Chandler Pavilion, one night only, you okay. know, like that. Or it could be anything, you know, the Flying Dutchman, the pirate ship that supposedly sunk, came back as a ghost ship, and, you know, plunders all ships at sea. The Flying Dutchman, the captain, was named Van Halen. It could be anything. It could sum up anything, and therefore you could grow within it. Highlights of Van Halen's show is David Lee Roth's astounding stage presence. He shows off his prowess in the martial arts 
in the splits and other gymnastics that seem impossible. I love to fly, but the discipline that it takes for me to get myself loose so I don't hurt myself when I land, because uh, going up is nothing. Coming down is the whole ball of wax. The things I go through as far as warming up, stretching, watching what you eat, etc., etc., to where you can get maximum altitude and really feel like you're soaring is such a pain in my behind. <laughs> I wish I could just take a slug off the bottle and swing into it and get five feet off the ground, you know, and smile and wink. But you can't do it. It doesn't work that way. As usual, the answer lies somewhere in between. My thrill for throwing myself into the air and uh, doing something while I'm up there balanced with how much I hate the homework. But if you spin hard enough and fast enough in that kind of heat and that kind of noise, then you achieve a whole nother consciousness. Now, I don't know if I'm losing brain cells or what, but it's a whole nother world. It's a whole nother feeling. It's, it's difficult to explain, but I guess, you know, somebody someday will write it up as therapy, and in Beverly Hills, people will do it. <laughs> You know, for two hours, they'll scream at the top of their lungs and they'll run in place to wild, violent music with all kinds of their friends cheering them on and piped in applause and everything until they fall out on the floor like I do backstage after the show. Dave has always emphasized that he lives the rock and roll lifestyle. He is no different, he says, off stage than he is on. Rock and roll. It's everything. Rock and roll is your lifestyle. Rock and roll is the way you talk. Rock and roll is the way you live and breathe. What time did you go to bed? Did you go to bed? What did you eat for breakfast? Did you eat breakfast? How fast did you drive? How do you treat your boyfriend? How do you treat your girlfriend? How do you dress? How don't you dress? And on and on and on and on and on. And that's got to come from the heart. It's got to be real for me. And I think that as long as we maintain that with Van Halen and we live by that credo, then that will translate onto the records and into the live shows and I'll always have a job. You play what you can play. You go for what you know, you know. And that is true rock and roll. David Lee Roth has worked obsessively for 10 years to make Van Halen happen. Now that they've made it, I asked him what challenges him next. I want the world. I want the world now. That's a big demand that I'm willing to work for. What does the world mean? What does that mean, you want the world? I want to go to the farthest out islands, and I want to see somebody with a smile on their face dancing to our music coming over some pedestrian tropical disco somewhere without him even knowing who the hell I am. You know, I want to see that. I want to see him walk off with a girl so they can go cohabitate. Because that, my song was their song. Bomba dee da, 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 bomba Just sing a song and think about sunny weather. Happy trails to the moon. This is Lisa Robinson. I'd like to thank my guests Eddie Van Halen and David Lee Roth for these exclusive interviews on the Inside Track.
Please join us next month when my guests will be Mike Peters from The Alarm, Stuart Adamson from Big Country, and Chrissy Hind of The Pretenders. We'll be right back after this. Uh -huh.